magic of the sunstone, you're tuned into the Jewel Riders Archive. Hey Jewel fans, I'm Chris. And I'm Ronnie from the Jewel Riders Archive. We're here today to finally, on the podcast, really kind of break down and talk about each of the toys for Jewel Riders. I can't believe that we haven't ever really talked about them. I, I mean, mean like, we have. We've talked about them in concept, like with Greg. And exactly, so prototype state, right. but not really the final right. toys. It's like, oh, wait a minute, we've never actually talked about these on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought it would be a good idea to start right now to have a conversation. Yeah, and I know you'd mentioned to me you that we were going to kind of cross-compare the toys with what they were in the show. Right. Because, you know, that's one of my big beefs is always, I want the toys to be screen accurate. Hashtag screen accuracy. Exactly. <laughs> Chris is sometimes really focused on that where he'll be like, I liked this figure because it was screen accurate. Oh my god, I know. Always as a kid, if it wasn't screen accurate, I'm like... But it's not right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and maybe that's subliminally why some of the second season toys, the second wave, for me, aren't as appealing. I mean, not only are they more minimalistic versus the first wave, but I feel like maybe I just also as a kid didn't really know what the second wave in my head, like what the second season it's not as distinctive. You know right. what I mean? Like, it wasn't emblazoned all over the merchandise right. like the first season outfits were. And to me, the second season outfits actually lose some detail work mm-hmm. that the first season has. Like, Gwen has those spiral designs on her bodice in the original season, but those all disappear to just, like, a flat pink. Right, with, like, a chest plate. Yeah. And then Tamara has this, like, wraparound, almost like what Fallon wears in the first yeah. season as the deluxe version. Yeah, so I've ne- I mean, I've never liked the second season outfits as much. But that's probably, you know, that just goes along with probably not liking the second season as much. Well, so. and we'd love to hear your feedback and yeah. comments on that, so let us know. So let's go ahead and just kind of dive right in. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing that we want to talk about is a little bit about the toys. And of course, the other aspect of this is you can watch full-length reviews right. of the toys as our archive showcase. Yeah, we've recorded, you know, each toy has a specific episode for the archive showcase series where we are on video with the toy, with, you know, if you really want to see all those details. And we reminisce about the stories. Right. Of some of them of how we got the doll and which right. ones we like better and all that fun stuff. Yeah, so there's a lot. You can dig as deep as you really want <laughs> Into these. each individual. Yeah. And if the particular doy hasn't released yet, those episodes are coming out. So again, stay tuned to our YouTube channel for the episodes for the archive showcase mm-hmm. for reviews of each individual doll to be shared. Right. So let's go ahead and start off with the titular character, Guinevere. 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 We were just discussing this about (laughs) how, for me, when it comes to King Arthur, it's just King Arthur and Guinevere. But apparently it's Guinevere. Yes. We've been wrong, I guess, this whole time. (laughs) I think that it really obviously influenced me. Your brain just auto-corrects Guinevere to Guinevere. Exactly. I mean, I... I, I can't really hear a difference. I, mean, I know. When you over enunciate right. the Guinevere. When you then, go all yes. Julie Andrews on it, Guinevere. Exactly. <laughs> but to me, it's just Guinevere. Right. So here we have Princess Guinevere, or Starla, yeah. in her jewel power outfit. And one of the things that I like is also when you have them undressed and you're looking at this, it's essentially like their adventuring outfit. Right, yeah. The snap-on armor pieces basically give you that double play feature where you can have them. Hashtag screen accuracy. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, of course, there's no way to remove the helmet pieces. Well, I think you could technically pull them out of the side. <laughs> but Yes, but then they would still have this like but then they just have swim a, cap on. A swim cap with a big ponytail. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it really it, it did not do any good taking right. off, the, taking off right. the visor. That was one thing that I remember as a child that I kind of wanted. Because when when I didn't have the armor on, I was like, oh, it's kind of like they're in their adventuring outfit, but then they still have their helmet on. And I was like, but that's not screen accurate. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that upset me. Right. But when you're looking at the jewel power Guinevere doll versus the artwork for the show, mm-hmm. it's pretty spot on. I right. mean, there are some differences. What are some things I mean, you first see? I the first thing I notice is the lack of the cape. Okay, the on cape. the doll. So the cape is 
is something that she only ever has in this jewel armor outfit. Mm-hmm. Never in any of the other versions of it. And I do miss it. I miss it on the toy. Do you? I wish they could have included it somehow. I mean, like, the the ruffle thing that she wears, mm-hmm. it's fine. Like, <laughs> Well, it's also worn differently. Like, the way that she wears it, it goes behind her neck and then in front of her arms and right. then in her back. But... On the t- on the design for the actual show, it's kind of two pieces. Right, it kind of starts at the hip, comes up over the shoulder, and, and then it goes comes back. back down. Yes, exactly. So again, I mean, I, I mean, guess they're limited on it the is design. A, it is, I guess, a creative way of interpreting that for a toy mm-hmm. to do it a little more cheaply. But when you say the ruffle thing, I think so many of us consider it like this, you know, fashionable collar thing that she just wears on the toy. But I think it's a little bit less pronounced in the actual artwork. Oh, it's so, much less pronounced because it doesn't come up behind her head. Right. It doesn't go up behind her head. It's like, it's it's much more frilly, doll-esque yeah. in the toy versus the artwork. Um, the other thing that I foresee is the fact that the armor pieces, and I know that they're just a clear plastic, mm-hmm. but on the show, it's the golden jewels on, like, the pink right. armor or the leather pieces, but on the toys, they're all just pink pieces. Yeah, and you can see on her boots on the toy, she has the molded gem from the show. Oh, same thing with all the other yeah. pieces, like the collar piece, like, they uh-huh. have the molded jewels on right. it. Right, it's just none of it's painted. Right, it's yeah. all just a clear plastic. Um, the other thing is that the armbands, so in the final artwork, they go up to her elbow. Yeah, they're quite large. And on the toy, they're, like... Their their wrist size. Yeah, their their wrist size. They look a little spikier on the end. They're much more spikier than what they are in the actual toy design. Again, it's more like a arm brace versus like a little I don't know bracelet or something. Right. Yeah, it's like the cuff almost. Right. Um, the I mean the 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 chest part of the toy is pretty screen accurate, like what you were talking about, how she yeah. has the design. I think the only thing is is that in the show it's purple and on the toy it's pink. Yes, it is a, like a dark shade of pink on the toy. Mm-hmm. Also, I remember on my childhood toy that that rubbed off. Yes, so, we discussed that in the archive yeah. showcase. But she has her bodysuit. She's yes. lacking the cape, unfortunately. Yeah. She has almost the correct style boots, again, just without the golden mm-hmm. jewels on it. And her helmet, I think, again, that the plastic is all the same color. But right. in the show design, the helmets, the visors are a lighter color. They're like a glass right. versus a heavy plastic that's over them. Right. And it gives them almost like a racer helmet look. Yes. Which I liked a lot. Well, and Greg talks about this right. in many previous right. podcast episodes. But the other thing is, is that on the doll, the top headpiece matches the rest of the body color, which is like a mauve purple. Mm-hmm. But then it's like this hot pink plastic piece. But yet on the design of the show... The whole helmet is hot pink. Right. So it's kind of like a different color as well. Right. Yeah. You, you, you wonder why they didn't make it the same color. I know. You sort of wish, like, oh, I kind of wish the the plastic pieces for the doll could have been cast in a little bit lighter shade mm-hmm. of plastic. I think that would have been nice. Well, the thing is, is that I think the hot pink color kind of matches the artwork. But it's just the fact of, again, like, the boots. The boots on the toy should have been the same color as the plastic right. pieces, as same as the top of her helmet piece. Right. So when you see Gwen as the toy without the plastic armor pieces, she's a little monochromatic to me. Mm-hmm. You know, in the in the show version, she's got that dark Purples. purple backing of the cape. Of course, the royal colors. Right. It's broken up with the yellows of the jewel pieces. Um, You know, there's a little more difference between the pink colors that they use for her. Mm -hmm. And it's all all a little, like, narrower band. I gotcha. Yeah. So now, next up is Fallon. Jewel Power Fallon. Um, And again, when we talk about these, of course, we're referencing the Princess Guinevere toys, but... Truly, the toys are the exact same as the Starla versions. Right. It's just the packaging is different. Um, so for Fallon, we have, again, a jewel power doll that 
can kind of double as her adventure outfit as right. well. Um, it's interesting, and I wonder, I'm sure, that Greg and every other person who involved in this made it that way, so that way the toys could also kind of be screen accurate without their jewel right. armor. Because when they're adventuring, it's almost the exact same outfits, except for Tamara. The puffy sleeves. Yeah. I feel like that's really the only character that well, really changed she, that much. She has the casual outfit that you see her in occasionally. Like in Fairy like Princess. Like in Jewel Quest and Jewel or Quest. Fairy Princess. Yeah. Where she's got essentially her Jewel Rider outfit, just without the without armor. Without the armor. Here. And that's what most of them have. Yeah. And it's, you know, I do appreciate it as a play feature, mm-hmm. definitely. That, you know, you could play with them in two different ways. Right. Without having to buy a second doll or an outfit pack. Exactly. And now you were talking about the colors on Guinevere. Now let's look at the colors on Fallon. I love the fact that they're so multicolored. Like, I think that that makes her stand out. Plus, she's the entire, you know, right. color she's, scheme. She's the triad of the Jewel Rider colors, right? She's got the teal, she's got the pink, and she's got the purple. Right. Maybe that's why she always looks the nicest. She does look the nicest to me. <laughs> and it's more just, it's it's more appealing. Like, it's not just this, like, large pink mass. Yeah. You know? But she seems to be very screen accurate. Maybe that's also why you like, enjoy her the most. I know. She's probably my favorite of the Jewel Power dolls. I mean, even down to having, like, the little moon brace on the bottom of her shoe. Like, she yeah. has everything. It's like, it's still there on the molded boot, even if it's not colored, colored correctly. Yeah. Right. But then the boots are, like, the appropriate color that are in the show. Mm -hmm. The pants are almost the exact... It's almost exactly the same. Yeah. Um, The... The one thing is, is that her cape. Again, I know we've talked about this in the Archive Showcase. The toy itself, it's much of a lighter material. Right, they're very, like, these tool materials. Versus, like, the heavier fabric, like Mm -hmm. a Drake cape or something like that. Yeah, exactly. That would have been nice. But we have what we have. Um, I think the thing that always stood out for me, and again, it's just the way that you have to have it, but it's the little, very delicate pieces of fabric that are attached to the cape that go around the doll's mm-hmm. arms. arms. Yeah. One, it was so fragile, so it ripped. But two, it's like, I don't think that was screen accurate. Because in the, in the show, it always is just attached to the back of their... Of, yeah, their, of their armor piece. Yes. Yeah. I know. That... So yeah, I don't love... I don't love those little arm loops mm-hmm. on it, but... And even the design of the cape, it's like a rounded piece of fabric, yeah. whereas in the show, it's more like a rectangle. Right. Um, I do think once you put the chest plate on, mm-hmm. it does cover those up a little bit. A little bit, yes, but you can still see them. Not right. Like, you look at the art of the show and it's a little bit different. Right. Um, I think also maybe another reason why we look at her and think that she's a lot more screen accurate is that the jewel pieces and the moon pieces on her cartoon artwork are purple. So yeah. the fact that they didn't paint them necessarily on the toy, it really didn't yeah. lose anything. It's like a diff- it's like a slightly different shade of purple, mm-hmm. but it's not complete. It's not a completely different color. And they even have the stitching, the molding on her shirt, and right. everything. Right. Um, the one thing that I would say is that I've always thought her uh, chest plate on the doll is much more ornate than the actual art design. Right. Like, the design just has the moon and, like, the little line the, with the pearl necklace. Yeah. But then on the toy, it, like, has all these, like, jewels all over it. Yeah. It's like, she doesn't ever actually have that. When no, have had it? When have you had but it? But not Fallon. Right. I mean, also, when you look at her helmet, she's got a... On the flags that come off the side, on the show, she's got, like, a, a uh, teal stripe in there. Mm-hmm. But on the doll, of course, all molded, one color, right? clear purple plastic. And we've talked about her helmet before, but I just want to point out, even though it's flags, it still kind of looks like bat wings. Like, mm-hmm. when it's like that, because they're so large. Yeah, the, I think the toys... Flag. Their helmets. Are, they're like almost ludicrously large. <laughs> like Versus the animated yeah, artwork. Where, you know, you can see in the animated artwork, it's like, okay, Fallon's an athletic character. She's got an athletic outfit. Her helmet, the, the racing flags mm-hmm. basically on it don't come back too far. Right. To reduce drag or whatever, you know, <laughs> right. as she's running through the forest. Maybe that's what it's for. Yeah. I don't know. But then, you know, with her giant flags <laughs> on the <laughs> on the toy. On the toy. But, and speaking of her helmet, it's also screen accurate because the color is right. 
So right. the purple of the boots and the top of the head match the color in the show. Right. So, I mean, overall, I feel very happy with the way that the Fallon doll Fallon came out. Fallon turned out wonderfully. Yeah, she's beautiful. Now, let's talk about, we talked about how Guinevere is just this pink mass. Well, yeah. Tamara is also a teal mass. That's, but yeah. the difference is, is that in the show, she's also a teal mass. Right. I mean, so I guess she's screen she, accurate. She's always mostly teal. <laughs> right. Um, so on this particular one, I know I have lots of thoughts on this one. And in conversations with Greg, he talked about the attention to detail and how he wanted to add more detail to the dolls, like on their armor mm-hmm. pieces. And of course that wasn't necessarily seen right. in the animation. So you have like, what was it? Like knitted it's like knee a, braces? It's like a quilted greave, basically. Okay. That she has in the toy. You can see that quilting pattern. And you can also and see, you can it, see on it, it on the neck. The neck piece. Yes. Yeah. But then in the show, it's just... It's just flat. Right. So it's yeah. almost like, as a child, it's like, I don't want this artic... Like, yeah. the different, you know... Right. The pieces that have all the different details on it. I just want it to be plain. Right. <laughs> it's like, of course, that's just a simplification for animation. Right. Of course. Yeah. But again, if you're going to be screen accurate. And oh, I think yeah. the other thing is, is that because pink is my favorite color, and because Tamara has the teal and pink, I really miss the fact that they don't have pink a lot on her, except for, like, her makeup and her yeah. hair... But yet on the on the art design, you know, there's pink in the armbands, there's pink on the neck, there's right. pink on the, on the on the large heart stones that are on her knees. Yeah. So it's like it's missing from the top. Yeah, it does it does help to break up the silhouette of that just teal just uh-huh. all the way down. Right. I wish that she yeah. looked a little bit more pink on the toy. They did preserve the pink at the edge of the skirt into the toy. Well, I guess they needed to do that also because they just needed to find <laughs> they needed a way to have an edge. It. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So they just thought, well, we'll use this thread for it. Right. But then also it's like, again, it's a very, as you've said, gossamer, like a very thin yeah. fabric, you know, like a tulle fabric. It's just, yeah. the show, it's not that thin. And yeah, so it, it's, they just make me laugh because they look like ballerina tutus. Exactly, it looks like a tutu rather than like a, a warrior skirt or something. Yeah. Um, but she does have the the arm braces, which I know yes. it cannot be, one, they're fragile, but two, it can't be 100% screen accurate because how are you going to have a completely rounded piece of, right. of plastic to slip on yeah. and off? But it always upset me as a child, the fact that they were half braces. Yeah. Because I'm like, in the show, it's all the way around. Well, I think it's funny because... I mean, you could do it, but it would have to be molded onto her arm and painted. And then, of course, I would want to take them off. And right. I would be upset that I couldn't take them right. off. Right. So, so you're doomed. You no just ma- can't win. You're doomed no matter what. I think I tried to even, because, of course, I had multiples. So I think that I tried to put two and two on the same arm oh, it to put them together. Fit, yeah. It doesn't fit, though, because it's, 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 a, like, it's, it's like, like three-fourths. Yeah, it's like a two-thirds to three-fourths away around exactly. the arm. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so it doesn't ta- quite It's work. interesting on the... The Tamara doll, the, her little elf shoes are much more pronounced mm-hmm. than on what it looks like. Okay, well, to me, when I look at the screen version, it looks like she's wearing, like, a tight with, like, a small stiletto heel. Okay, I can see that. Um, but I think it. I think it's just supposed to be a, a boot of right, some kind. Right, like a covered boot or yeah. something. But then we just, go back to the same thing where if you look at the screen art... The whatever covering it is, it goes all the way down to her toes, whereas on the toy, it snaps on at her ankles. Right. Now, the the plastic pieces and her shoe are almost the same, same color, color, so right. it's supposed to look kind of like right. it's all one boot. But then on the show, the toe is a different color. So again, yeah. screen accuracy, it's right. a little bit off. I guess they're trying to give you that, the play feature from having her look like her casual version. Right, right. so that way you can With take the it little off elf shoes. Like, Although there's much more elfish shoes of in like course, Fallon yeah. and Sun Power Guinevere, yes. but at least these ones, yeah. Um, I think that she has a lot more makeup than in the show. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, I think that goes for all of the dolls. But I just feel like Tamara's maybe just because it's a like a teal green eye shadow, it just yeah. stands out that much more. Yeah, her eyes are like very teal. They're very very green. I mean, but these are like these are '90s doll faces, right? Like, right. there's Gwen has. Basically, like Barbie, 90s Barbie and blue eyes, like tanned. Right. Um, so, I mean, overall, I guess she's pretty screen accurate, except 
I guess the doll just has a lot more detail than the final artwork does. Right. But we love her, and of course, hashtag Tamara forever. Yes. And now, to the next one, your favorite. It's Drake. Yay. Yay. Jill Power Drake. Yeah. So Drake is kind of vastly different (laughs) from screen to toy. I mean, everything. Yeah. You know? I mean, of course, you know, in the prototype stage, he started out with pink pants, Mm -hmm. which eventually got replaced with that sort of muddy brown Brown. color. When Which, in the show, it's golden. It, yeah, it's like a golden tan, like a khaki. Mm-hmm. Um, they did mold his dagger to his leg... Which is kind of fun. You know, I don't think that he actually ever... I mean, I think that there is kind of a belt that goes around yeah, it. I it's think, just not always seen yeah, in the artwork. Yeah. Um, but it, it always bugged me as a kid that the pack basically wore, like, maroon jackets and mm-hmm. vests as they're, they're under their armor... And this Drake has, like, a pale purple. I think I also didn't like it because, again, I wanted the pieces to be painted separately. Like, the belt should have been more pronounced. Like, why is right. it a purple the, belt the with the a purple? belt is just molded in the same color as the shirt. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I'm sure, actually, that Drake from top to bottom is probably molded in that purple color. Mm-hmm. And then it's just painted, painted for the pants and the boots. Yeah. Uh, the boots are actually fairly accurate color-wise to that sort of bluish purple that they are in the show. Of course, they're missing the painted details. Right. But at least they have, like, the little four stones on them. Yeah. Them. Again, the four stones should have been painted. Right. It should have been okay. painted. The armor is actually pretty much the correct color. Mm-hmm. It's that dark blue, almost purple mm-hmm. color. And that is correct for the both the armor chest plate and... The arm braces. I'm going to talk about the cape. Yes. So the cape for me, it should have been longer on the toy. Yes. Um, I know it has the flaps and he does have flaps on his jewel power outfit as yeah. well. Um, but I guess it just, it feels much more different in the animation versus the toy design. Well, I'm sure you've noticed on the toy that those top, the top piece of the cape just curls right back up. Always, like, yes. Like, as if you would put curlers in it. <laughs> oh, and at like, least in the packaging, it's flat. But it's yeah. just, once you open it, they oh, start yeah. to curl. Yeah, and then it's, it'll never go back down, no mm-hmm. matter how much you stretch it or whatever. I suppose I could take an iron to it, but I'm kind of afraid to do that. <laughs> no, don't do yeah. that. Um, I mean, the cape is also this... It's almost like a Tamara teal on the toy. Mm-hmm. And it's much more, like, bright green. green. Like a... Like, not like a forest green, but like a... Like yeah. a lime. Not lime. It's not a lime. It's just like a bright, grassy green mm-hmm. color. Forest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the grass, the color of the trees. You know? And it's more like... Like, Drake has a very red sort of, like, palette in the show. Like, his skin's a little redder. His shirt is red. He's got the redder brown of the pants, the brighter green. Brown hair. Yeah, and it's sort of a... It's sort of like if you slid the contrast over to the blue side, mm-hmm. you, you get the, the toy. toy. You got the toy. Well, and speaking of browns to blues, even like his eye color. Like they oh, made yeah. him like have green he eyes. Has green eyes. But that's not, the, that's not the artwork. Yeah. He's like, you know, this brown-eyed hunk who also, I think because... They didn't give him hair. They just have him in his helmet. I feel like it's harder to have normal Drake oh, versus yeah. Jewel Power Drake. I feel like you always want to just have Jewel Power Drake. Yeah. And because his helmet is the wolf head mm-hmm. also, you've got like, oh, well, I guess I'll just put this wolf head <laughs> up on my head. And we've talked about this before, but the fact that the... Art, you know, Greg was all about giving more detail to the toys, and yet the artwork, the wolf has, like, detailed fur. Yeah. And then you look at the toy, and it's just this smooth helmet. Well, yeah, and color-wise as well, of course, in the show, they are gray wolf helmets. But here they're purple. Yeah. Even though, I think that obviously it's just a plastic, but then he has so many purple plastic pieces. Right. Like, the flag, it's just like, okay, it's a lot of purple like yeah there, there's not enough i feel like browns and greens yeah i i agree would and you have rather had a gray helmet i mean i know I screen I, accuracy but versus how the toy actually looks you know i guess i 
I probably would have preferred it to be to be gray, but I'm sure it like didn't cost out to do one piece in a different color in plastic. A different color of plastic. Right? Um, but I do, I do wish it had a little more detail. I guess at least on the helmet. Well, and we're talking about the screen accuracy of Drake. Yeah. The next one. Oh gosh. She yeah. is something. We yeah. have. Lady Kale, Jewel Power Lady Kale. I think this one honestly suffers the most. I think she does too. <laughs> because uh, Greg has said though in previous conversations that she ended up they wanted to make her less threatening looking, but she ends up looking like Guinevere's evil little sister. <laughs> <laughs> she just she doesn't feel like a, as a villain to me. She looks I don't I don't even know the characters' names, but it almost looks much more Sailor Moon inspired. Oh yeah, she's very Queen Barrel looking. Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking of. Especially I think just with like kind of like that moon shattered like lava yeah. armor. Like it just it looks very much like Sailor Moon esque. But in the show, you know, she's supposed to be taller. She's very seductive. I know in the Archive Showcase episode, I talk about how I wish they would have made a sexy toy that looks like <laughs> her. But I mean, that's truly, I think that that's the reason why we like Kale is because she's campy. She's fun. She's a little bit seductive. She's sassy. Yeah. But the toy, she's just clunky. And she has this weird dragon scale outfit. Yeah. And I think it's funny. It's like... These these pieces, outside of the arms, there's not shared pieces between these toys. Mm-hmm. Like, you could have molded them and made them like how, however or whatever. you wanted. Like, you didn't have to make her in the same height as the other toys. Right, you could have made you her taller. You could have made her taller. And... As I've said, you know, I, 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 I would have loved to have had her taller. Again, I think it's the cape. It's a, it's a thin material versus the heavier material. Yes, it's long, but it just, again, it, because it's such a thin yeah. material, it doesn't seem threatening. Her cape is one of the pieces to me that suffers the most. She's, she really needed, like, a good cape material. A solid material. Yeah, a solid material with two colors Mm -hmm. on it. Because, I mean, it is purple and red. Yeah, it's purple on the inside and red on the outside. But it's just so thin that you... You don't really get menace out of it. Yeah. Um, you get garden party. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is the jewel armor pieces. So they're they're somewhat the right color. I mean, it is a reddish, yeah. maroonish color, dark red in the show. But again, they're much more like obsidian, lava on the toy. Mm-hmm. And in the show, I mean, it's just very different. Like on the toy, the little arm thing it's much more thinner whereas like on the on the artwork in the show it's almost like a shelf like well yeah you know it's, it's a large piece her her shoulder it's a pauldron i don't know what i called. think that might be what they're called but it is like it's this jagged crystal piece mm-hmm. that comes out quite far and it's like yeah it almost looks like on the toy it almost looks like you could use it as like a little like, like a tiara. Like a little tiara, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you could, I think. I did do that occasionally. <laughs> like, I put them as tiaras on the others. When I made Evil Guinevere. Oh when my she was under gosh, the trance. That's hilarious. I remember I put, I put it on the deluxe Guinevere. So yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really seem the same. And then, like, her, um, her arm pieces. So on her left arm, they gave her the little armband. But in the show, it's a very thin thin purple band mm-hmm. but on the toy it's this like thicker red band so oh, that yeah. always bothered I've, I've me I've never noticed that and then actually. the larger arm band on the right arm you know in the show it goes up again just like with Guinevere it goes up to her elbow mm-hmm. on the toy at least it does go up a little bit more but like I wanted it all the way up to the elbow like that's yeah. just what I wanted I wanted it to be larger pieces and I know it's like the eye glowing thing is a cool feature but it off of one episode. Exactly. It's off of one episode. And then you're stuck with this beady-eyed doll for the rest of the time. And because of the light... I don't even know if it's because of the light piping or what it is, but, like, her neck is so thick. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're talking about screen accuracy, but the other thing is is that just talking about screen accuracy and being clunky, her boots. So, 
in the show, her boots are supposed to go up to her thighs. Yeah. But in the toy, it only goes up to her ankles. I mean, her, her, knee. Um, her knee. And then the braces go all the way up to her thigh. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's just that on the doll, the braces are more exaggerated than what they are in right. the artwork. Right. Yeah, she's... There, uh, like, there's, like, a split at the top you can see on the show that it doesn't look like they have on the toy. Or if it is, it's very... You mean on the boot? Yeah. Yeah, it's there. It's, it's there. Just, oh, it's yeah. It's very hard. It's just, like, it's not as pronounced, basically. Right. So, again, I love her boots in the show. I love the design of it. And I think that that just didn't carry over right. into the toy design. Um, she right. does she's, have a belt. She's got, like, X-Men villain boots. A little which, bit, yeah. yes. Um, again, why I liked it. Yeah. Um, on the artwork in the show, again, on the doll, she's very red. Like, that's pretty much the color except for yeah. the purple hair. Which, again, screen accuracy. In the show, she has black hair, but on the doll, she has right. purple hair. I know. It's like they almost should have given Fallon that purple, purple hair, hair and given Kale a blacker The blacker shade. hair. Yeah. With even, with maybe with purple strands yeah. in it. But she has some purple on her in the show. You know, her belt... Her straps that go around her chest, those are yeah. all purple. And on the toy, I feel like they don't even... They do kind of have the four, but then, like, like in the ha- show, it's supposed to be four straps. Right. It goes all the way around on both sides of her top and her bottom. But on the toy, it's like it only goes around one side or only yeah. under the bottom. It's just, again, not 100% yeah. screen accurate, and it doesn't have that purple color. Right. So, again... We kind of go back to, like, these characters being very monochromatic, Mm -hmm. and Kale is this very red monochromatic toy, with the really only breakup being the purple hair. Right. I mean, her dragon helmet is, I think it's actually molded fairly, like, close to what... Molded, yes. Colored, no. Colored, no. Because, again, in the show, it's not, it's not even red! It has dark, like, maroons and purples. Right. And it's like, you know, of course you lose all that detail. Again, just like Drake, just like Fallon. Mm-hmm. You know, without the paint applications, you lose detail. I get it in color theory that red is supposed to, you know, create, like, menace and, and right. you know, give you anxiety almost. But uh, it, it's almost like I would have rather had a more purple villain rather than mm-hmm. a red villain. Yeah. But, again, that's just the way it was made, I suppose. Yeah. So, and speaking of things that show up in only one episode, <laughs> right. Sun Power Guinevere, or as I like to call her, Jackie O Guinevere. Yeah, and so we explain more in yeah. the archive showcase episode. Do you want to start off with this one? Sure. Um, number one, <laughs> she is purple in the toy, and in and the she show, is pink in the show. She's my favorite color. Yeah. Um, she has. On the toy, she has this painted on bodice that's like ties that is nowhere to be seen in the, in the, in the final artwork. Yeah. Yes. Which always makes me laugh. <laughs> well, but like I do love her because she has that very medieval headpiece mm-hmm. with the pieces that cover the ears and the crown. The one thing that always stood out for me on the artwork in the show is how detailed that crown and, and oh, neck yeah. and hairpiece was. It's like, it's so detailed. I can't imagine drawing that in every single frame. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, now when somebody has like a plaid pattern and details like that, like CG. CG. Right. Like... Uh, that would be a no-brainer. Yeah. But the fact that they had animators drawing these frame by frame, like all the little B details and all the little crisscross yeah. patterns on her helmet and on her skirt. So I appreciate the artwork just for that. I know. Like, it's like, I wonder if there's like just one animator out there who was like, mission was to draw all of these Sunpower Guinevere. Guinevere shots. In dream fields. Yeah. So I'm glad that they made a unique toy, but I think Mm -hmm. one, it's the color scheme. As you said, she's purple in the doll. In the show, she's pink. She has a lot more purples and pinks in the show, like the pattern, like of the, you know, the, the almost Scottish style, like flan, uh, plaid. Yeah. But on the toy, while the molded pieces have that detail of a, of a crisscross plaid pattern, there's no color differentiation. Right. So it just looks, you know, unless you're, like, right up at it, it looks just like 
a plastic armor piece. Of course, I would never do it, but I almost wonder, is there a fan out there who has painted these pieces? I mean, that would be amazing like, if there is. Like, has anyone gone there and, like, actually... I think we kn- I do know of someone who painted the yellow pieces onto the jewel armor Guinevere. Oh, So they went cool. through and they painted all the yellow pieces. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, please comment below so we can look again at your pictures. But yeah. I know I've seen them on Instagram. That is awesome. But I think it would be fun yeah. to have seen her waist piece with the different, like, yeah. oh, definitely purples. Because it's such a, I don't know, it's just such a distinctive outfit. Mm-hmm. It's something that you never see Gwen in again. But because of this toy, it's always remembered outfit. Right. And because it's not a party outfit, and it's not... One of the, like, standard adventure outfits. Because it is her adventuring outfit. Yeah. I mean, it was just randomly, has... like, why? Why? It was never even explained. Like, why are you wearing this random outfit on right. this episode? It would have been funny if she was like, all oh, my other clothes are dirty. I had to wear this one. <laughs> or, like, if Anya gave her this as a birthday present. I don't know. Like, maybe they could right. have done something with that storyline. Yeah. Somewhere out there, some fan, make a fanfic about this of how she got this outfit. Maybe it was a gift from someone whose tartan pattern that was. (laughs) (laughs) It's her Scottish cousin. Exactly. Uh, Now, she has, again, that thin type of cape, but I don't mind it on this one. This is perfect for this. Yeah, I mean, it works here better than I think it does on any of the other pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, And here they gave her, like, a gold trim, but in the show she doesn't even have a gold trim. It's just a pink cape. With a little bit of light purple in it. Yeah. The Also, the plastic pieces on Sun Power Guinevere are chosen as a hot pink color to match the Jewel Power Guinevere mm-hmm. and, of course, Deluxe Guinevere as yeah. well. But I, I feel like in the show, it's more of like a light pink color. I don't know. I mean, again, because it's a plaid, it's kind of a mixed color. So right. you got light pink, hot pink, purple, yellows. Yeah. It's kind of everything. Um, as you mentioned, they have this per- bluish design on her chest that's not in the show. But they did give her the puffy sleeves. I know. So I suppose if they ever made Jewel Adventure Tamra, this is how well, she would have looked. And I always sort of wonder, I'm like, so you molded these puffy sleeve arms. You only ever use them here. Mm-hmm. Was At some point, was there the idea of, oh, we could possibly reuse these painted white? As Tamra. For Tamra. Again, if there's a fan out there, maybe you want to deconstruct a Guinevere of course, and turn you know, it into Tamara. Of course, you'd have to get rid of that block in her hand that is masquerading as the sunstone. sunstone. But I think even adventuring Tamara wears the little elf shoes. Yeah. So it's almost exactly like a Tamara outfit, essentially. She just needs to be turned into a Tamara. Yeah. Um, so, again, enjoying the puffy sleeves. Yeah. And, and there's beadwork detail on the toy, so at least they got that right. Um... I do I do actually, like, really love her toy. Yeah. Like, she's one of my favorites. Is it just because it's unique? It's because it's different and unique, yeah. Well, let's talk about probably the most, what do I want to say, the most mass-produced, aside from yeah. Jewel Power Guinevere, is Deluxe Guinevere. Deluxe Gwen. Deluxe Jewel Adventure Princess Guinevere. <laughs> yes. I always, uh, like we've said before, it always kills me. <laughs> it's the, just... The, Party dresses or jewel adventure. It's just such a such a title. Yeah, it's like why? Right. Because <laughs> you're really adventuring in this poofy pink outfit. Exactly. And again, you can hear all of our rants and raves on the archive showcase right. episode. But screen accuracy wise, okay. We don't know what's under the decorative breastplate that she wears in her right. jewel adventure outfit. So I guess I'm glad that they gave them some little designs on these. Right. But it's just like, okay, so there's this like fun sun blast, but you never see this in the show. So you just have to assume right. that's what the artwork was. Now, if I remember correctly, are there some pieces of artwork from the style guide that show turnarounds of them in a bodysuit? That have a similar design. Yes, there are, but again, we don't really ever right. see those. You don't in the ever show. see them in the show. They're just in that style. Yes, guide. they are. So that's probably again where they were probably pulling right. from. They were like, "Oh, look, oh, it's there. Look, it's here. Right. I guess so, we'll use it." So clearly, it must be in the show. Let me yeah. just turn it into the toy. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> so starting at her top, her little tiara. We were talking about how Kale's shoulder piece could be turned yes. into a tiara. I feel like Gwen's tiara could be turned into a shoulder it's piece. It's huge. It's so much larger than what it is in the show. It's, I think 
Probably because it's like nested in her hair in right. the show, but then obviously with a toy they need to come down. But it like it like hooks into her ears. Like it always just... makes me laugh because it feels like something from Pretty Pretty Princess uh-huh. that a five year old would put on. <laughs> and I miss, of course, you know the gems not being painted again. Mm-hmm. This is another it's gold the golden gem. pieces that are supposed to be in there. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, she really is just pink. Yeah. So I think from a screen accuracy point of view, it's pretty screen accurate. Yeah. Except I, for the fact that the sunstone is in her hand and it's also on the breastplate, but they should have painted it on the breastplate. Right. But I guess then I would be upset because then I'd be like, there's two sunstones. I know. Um, I do appreciate that they kept her choker. Mm-hmm. I wish they had kept it a little more hot pink. Because it's supposed because to be the color to be of like, the pink. breastplate yeah, and everything else. Same. So like, it's interesting because the breastplate... The choker, the crown, and the puffy sleeves are all supposed to be the sort of same hot pink color Mm -hmm. with accents. But the dress in the toy includes the puffy sleeves all as one piece. Well, again, I think it's... It's a manufacturing. It's a manufacturing limitation. But, and we talked about this, again, the lighter material. I don't know any, well... Maybe, you know, in medieval times, any woman that would have worn such a see-through dress. Yes. So, you, you know. You would have been thrown right out of church. Right. So that's that's that. So yes, I do kind of wish that the sleeves were. But I think on the toy, it, it makes, it's a nice breakup because you have the darker color breastplate right. and then the lighter sleeves right. and the lighter dress. Um, they even kept the wraparound shoes so like her ankles mm-hmm. have like a little wrap that yes. goes around her ankle and that's on the toy as well mm-hmm. now this is something that actually I never thought of as a child and I'm not thinking about it until this very yeah. moment her legs are exposed in the artwork uh-huh. on the show and the toy it's all pink it's all molded pink. I like she's never never thought you never of thought this. of that no. that's hilarious did you think about this you know I I sort of recognize it in the back of my mind, uh-huh. but now looking at the artwork right next to it, I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I never thought of that. Yeah. But then it, I mean, already, the, you know, they're, they're very hesitant to want to paint everything different colors, so it's right. like, you know, I get it, it's probably like a legging, like a tight or something right. like that under it, but it's like, but how I'm would like, they have done it if it was skin tone, but then they had to paint the shoes the individual well, color? you know what, they had to paint the shoes anyway. They could have just molded the leg in the same plastic they use for the arms. Yeah, but I'm saying that the um, on the deluxe doll, it's all one color. It's all that just pearlescent. Oh paint. yeah, I know. So I'm but saying you that, could have. You know, I think you could have molded the leg separately in a different color. Yeah, but then you still have to paint the shoes. Yeah, but they. Oh, is the shoe not painted? No, it's on all the one deluxe. color. Oh, yeah, they're all one color. That's what I was saying. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. they didn't they didn't individually paint the shoes. Okay. But you know that's just the way it is. Deluxe Fallon though has the shoes she has painted, painted shoes, yeah. but Tamra and Guinevere oh, don't because okay. Deluxe Fallon also has the elf shoes, mm-hmm. whereas Tamra and Fallon have the heels with the wraps. Right. Okay. Which is really only a Guinevere design. Tamra doesn't have those. Right. But that's another conversation. Yeah. So anyway, I that's... also I also <laughs> don't love Deluxe Gwen's hair. In fact, I don't really like any of the Deluxe's hair. Uh, I like them. Because to me, they're just like an Aquanet poof. <laughs> <laughs> so you just wanted it to be a little bit more tame? I wanted a little more tame. Oh, I think the reason why I liked it because it gave that doll toy feature that oh, I was I mean, missing from the rest of them. definitely a doll toy look. Right. Yeah. So then now we have the Fallon that we were talking about. But again, the Fallon is wearing tights or leggings or whatever it is so her legs are this pearlescent teal Uh in the show her legs are exposed Exposed, so again they should all be skin colored Uh but she does have a different colored shoe on the toys at least least that breaks it up and it is screen accurate because it's a purple yes she does have those cute little elf boots Mm -hmm. on which in the toys it's a little bit more like a little I don't know like a uh what do I want to say? Like a slipper. Yes. Whereas in the they show... They go up much farther on the show. Yes. Yeah, they go yeah. Like right above the ankle. It's like a boot, whereas yeah, the other one is more like a slipper, I think. Yes. Yes, I agree. So that's that. Um, but the wrap is kind of... It's it's screen accurate in the coloring. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it wraps around her. And even in the show, you see where the piece is supposed to go around her shoulders and then the breastplate goes over it. So technically that is all screen mm-hmm. accurate. Yeah. No, I mean, 
I appreciate that they got the wrap dress correctly. Like, I think it could have been so much easier for them to just do a sewn dress. Like a skirt or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. And then they have... Now, the difference is, is that on the toy versus the artwork, there is a little bit difference because... In the toy, it's more of like this breast clip-on piece, whereas in the artwork, it's more like a chest piece. I yeah, mean, it kind of goes to her waist. I've never really noticed before on the artwork that it's a much fuller piece mm-hmm. than the toy. Right. It's supposed to go all the way down, yeah, basically. Yeah. And it goes down to her waist, essentially. Um, but it's it's almost like a corset. You know, that's exactly what it is. Whereas in the toy, that's not what it is. Um, But in the art, it also has straps that go over her shoulders. So again, it's much more of like a corset, kind of like a breastplate. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it... If at any moment something goes south, she's ready to battle even, I at, know. even at the party. It's a good Fallon. Right. But one thing that I do like about this is that the cape and the cape in the show, they're they're both this purple color. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a darker color, even though it's a lighter fabric, it feels heavier. Right. You know, and I, and I like the contrast. Again, Fallon's sporting all the colors. Yes. So I like the contrast of the darker shade of purple with the lighter shade of, like, the teal. Yeah. And it just goes really well together. Yeah. It's a... It's all... Purple and teal is always a really pleasant color combination, mm-hmm. so... Exactly. Um, they have her pearls. Now, they are different colors right. in the show versus what's on the dolls. But at least, right. again, just like with Gwenamere, right. they preserved a little choker necklace. Mm-hmm. This one has the necklace. And the cape has the kind of evil queen collar. The rough the, collar. Yeah, yeah, the one that goes up um, yeah, I, in the back. I didn't really notice that till right now. That oh, They really? actually did preserve that. Yeah, I've always noticed a it. rough piece. It like, has like a little wire piece yeah, in it as well in, it. In, the, in the neck. That preserves it and has, like, the little collar. Yeah, that's awesome. And, of course, one of the biggest difference, I think, between screen and toy is that in the toy, Fallon wears a glove Mm -hmm. that you can land the dragon Windy on. Right. But, of course, in the show, it's just a singular um, armored... Like, like little a bracelet bracer, thing. yeah. Now the thing is, again, painting wise, they could have painted Fallon's hand like skin colored, yeah, and it could have just been an armband. Well, yeah, because the magnet is up on like her forearm, yeah. So it didn't need to be the whole thing, but they kind of made it like a falcon's glove. Yeah, so it's like it's you're right. It's like that medieval falconer's mm-hmm. glove is what it is. But apparently she sort, wears it to a party. Which is sort of funny at a party, <laughs> I think, but yeah. Well, that's Tamra. I mean, that's Fallon for yeah. you. I'm so excited about Tamra. I'm already oh. calling her Tamra. So next is Jewel Adventure Deluxe or Deluxe Jewel Adventure Tamra. Uh, yeah, she's... She's something. She is. <laughs> she has so much going on here. It's almost unbelievable. You know... I like her without the deluxe dress on. I kind of like the pink and teal bodysuit. She actually looks better with that <laughs> than the dress. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so we're talking about screen accuracy. The show dress is very slimming. Yeah, it, it's, it's a... nicely tailored. Mm-hmm. The doll, it's just bulky. Well, yeah, because... They have an underskirt, and then they have this giant tool overskirt. Right. That is totally inaccurate to the show. And, I mean, I guess we can assume that maybe she wears one. It's just we don't really see it in the animation. Yeah. But the thing is, is that also, even just, like, the cut. So, like, she has, like, a V-neck cut. Uh Uh-huh. That, you know, um, that goes down. It's not quite like a... Like a peekaboo or anything like yeah. that. But, you know, it's kind of like that, whereas the toy, it's like goes up to her neck. Yes. So, like, she loses any, like, almost like femininity. Like, right. you know, very, I don't know, terror yeah. seductive. But, but, but it's like, you know. By the time you combine the higher neckline and the extra tulle skirt right. with the rough piece, uh-huh. she's drowning in this outfit. Right. It, it really is a bit much, you know, the, I just, I don't know if it's just the neckline for me or, or if it's the over piece or what it is, but you're right. It just, it's too much. Now the, um, the ruffle piece, unlike the Guinevere one, yeah. this one is screen accurate. It is supposed to go behind her yeah. neck no, and then around is, her back. This is what it's supposed to look like. Right. 
Right. So this is right. And they gave her the choker again. But I think it's almost like with everything on and the choker, she just looks too, just too much. She's lost in her own <laughs> outfit. Now this one, the skirt is full length. So it goes down to her ankles. So the fact yeah. that she's wearing like, you know, her it's legs molded. are all one color. Yeah. I, I'm okay with it. Even though yeah. you can kind of see her toes at the base of the skirt in the artwork, I, I'll allow it on the doll that you can, it's the full right. thing. But I almost wonder, like, what would it have looked like with Fallon or Guinevere to have the yeah. skin tone on I think it, it would have looked nicer, yeah. personally. Because it would break up that color. But Tamara, I mean, I don't know. It's a full length skirt, so I don't know if she has the little wrapped high heel. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know if she has Who that knows? or not, yeah. but it's on the toy. Right. Um, the other thing is the... Uh, just like with Guinevere, I don't, I don't know if Fallon. I think she probably does have the molded moonstone on there, but the deluxe Tamra again has the heartstone on her corset, right? But then she's also holding it. But in the show, she has all these pretty like pink jewels all mm-hmm. over the corset. Yeah. But in the show, I mean, in the toy, it's just one big block of. Teal. Yeah. And it's like, part of me almost wishes there was a way that you could preserve those side panels from the bodysuit mm-hmm. with the pink somehow that they just didn't get covered up by the dress. Right. Because it, it would it would help to have a little a little extra color there oh, somewhere. Exactly. Because otherwise she's just one big teal thing. Yeah, one big teal blob. Exactly. I mean her comb is a pretty pink and her yeah. her bodysuit's pretty pink, but yeah. Well, that's just the way it is. I know. And we haven't talked about it. We talked about Gwen's crown, but Fallon also had a little hair ponytail holder. Tamara also has one. The toys, I feel like... They're like like impossible to stay (laughs) in. Well, besides that, but I just feel like because of just their size, they're much larger on the toys than they are in the show, of course. I mean, I think it's like an animation thing, though, right? Like, there's always like a ponytail holder that's like, how thick would someone's hair have to be to have that actually work? Right. Right. So pivoting from the dolls themselves, let's move into the unicorns this time. The Jewel Adventure Deluxe Animal Editions. Yes, the most unwieldy (laughs) title ever. (laughs) So these beautiful horses are modeled after the Sassy 16s. Yeah, from Fashion Star Phillies. So Sunstar shares a mold with the Sassy 16 Justine and Ariel, while Ariel. Moondance, yes, Ariel, <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> and hilariously, Moondance shares a mold with the horse named Fallon in the Sassy 16s, and also the horse named Janelle. And as we've talked about before, that's probably one of the reasons why they chose Fallon as the name instead of Alex was because it was already trademarked somewhere in the Kenner catalog. Right. You know, companies definitely do this. You you can see this when they, Mattel did Monster High, they made a character named Spectra. And which is interesting because, you know, once upon a time in the 80s, they had a doll line called Spectra and the Shimmerons. Right, so, so it was again, obviously just something that like was trademarked. Or like Claudine from Monster High shares a name with the cat from She-Ra, Claudine. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, there's always a lot of reuse of names. Right. So let's companies. talk. So let's talk about Sunstar then. So yeah. Sunstar. Now there are a few obvious things that are a little bit different, and I think probably the main thing that most of the collectors of the Joyrider dolls uh, always have to bring up are the fact that it does, you know, the horses don't have manes. So right. that's one of the main things. Uh, the main so things? Uh, so looking at Sunstar, this scroll work that's going on in the top of the head, that's definitely not the way that it is in the show. So hashtag no screen accuracy on this No. One. And it bugged me so much as a child. You know, Sunstar has these curly Q sort of main hair. And here's this thing with this very rigid filigree that looks like a show horse from 1832. <laughs> I was going to say she stepped out of Vegas almost. Exactly. Um, so, but would you have rather her have, if... You know, if rooted hair is too expensive on a toy, would you rather have had her maybe molded, like a molded mane on top and then had hair as a tail? 
Yeah, I think I would have actually preferred that. Okay. I wonder what the rest of the fans think. Yeah, I mean, it could look like a really bad wig cap if it wasn't <laughs> done well, but... Right. So, looking at the rest of the horse, I mean, for the most part, she's on model. I mean, she has, you know, her white color. She has her golden horn. She has her blonde hair. She has some rump jewels. But then she also has this two-tone legs. So, her legs and her muzzle are, are clear plastic to... I, I guess, as Greg said it, to emulate the running on the magic. Although I never got that as a kid. No, I think, yeah, he was supposed to be like, she's running in the wild magic. And I'm like, but, but no, it's just the wrong <laughs> right? color. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't, I never got that as a child. I just, I thought it was supposed to just make them look more, you know. Uh, Fancy. Deluxe, yes. And in which case it did, it did. Yeah, so no, it totally does. And I remember Greg has talked about that it was an easy way to get more sort of value out of the paint was to mold them in that clear plastic and then spray over it. Cause it's just a little bit less more features. Right. But I was going to say, if you think about it, it's also a little bit less paint that you have to spread on the bottom That's of their true. legs That's and true. their muzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at the character, if you looked at her out of jewel armor, Sunstar has a very basic gold and light pink harness with this pink flower that the sunstone sits in. But then once she is transformed into jewel armor, suddenly there's this very ornate collar. And I cannot imagine drawing this every single frame. I mean, this is insane. There's so much going on when you look at it. It's like jewels holding up tapestries in between them. Right. And then there's little jewels on top of those tapestries. Right. And, you know, you look at the collar that's on the Sunstar doll and you think, oh, that's very ornate. But then you look at some of these artwork, like from Song of the Rainbow, and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's like legitimately how the animators drew it. Right. Like that's actually how it looks. Right. And the same thing with the scroll work on the saddle. The bottom part of the saddle on the toy is almost 100% screen accurate as to what it looks like in the show as well. There's the little scroll work and then even to the design of the of the saddle itself, all of that was drawn frame by frame in the show. I know. It's always fascinating to me because it really is quite a unique and complicated design, especially for a 1990s girls cartoon. Mm hmm. Right. So it's always it's wonderful to see that translated really accurately. And we were talking about the colors. Now, the gold and the pink on the doll work really well. But in the show, it's actually not screen accurate. Um, the collar is supposed to be gold. So that's correct. Um, but then they do have like the little golden and the pink designs on the collar that's not seen on the toy. And then on the saddle on the doll... The saddle is this pretty sparkly pink, but in the show, for the most part, it's all just a gold color. It's different color golds, right, but it's pretty much shades. all just that golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty much all that golden color. Um, but then there was a little bit of highlights of like a pinkish color. So it's almost as if it was reversed from what you see on the toy. It's like it's, you know, there's a little bit of pink, whereas in the toy, it's mostly pink and gold. It should be reversed. Right. But I like it this way. It's pretty. No, it definitely is. And it totally works with the color scheme of the toy. Right. Now, when you look at her jewel on the toy, I think as children, we always thought, oh, the one with the gold background behind the jewel is the prettier and more accurate one. But really, no, it's a pink color in the show. Right. But I think... It just, it, I think the metallic colors now, if you don't know what we're talking about, the unicorns, you might find them with this metallic colored kind of setting for the jewel, or you might find them with like, uh, you know, a pink or a purple. So Moondance had either silver or purple, Sunstar had pink or gold. Um, but the but the metallic ones were definitely kind of like the, the rarer ones. So that was always fun to find. Mm-hmm. Now, one feature that is on Sunstar is the wings. Um, but for me, it, it's not, <laughs> okay, it's not even screen accurate because of the fact that you can remove the saddle when she's not in jewel armor, but then she's just 
a unicorn. But then in order to make her an alicorn, you have to have her the wings, but the wings come off with the saddle. So it's it's not like She-Ra here. It's not like when Pearl, I mean, uh, I want to say Pearl Rider. Swift Wind. <laughs> Swift Wind, thank you. <laughs> not not Tango and the Guardians of the Magic. Nope. Too many horses. Uh, when Swift Wind changes from a horse into a Pegasus, it just, it seems like it's kind of the same thing that's happening here. I don't know. Right. But what's you your thought? Like the wings are, the wings on the toy look like magical constructs almost. Whereas, you know, on the show, of course, they're, you know, their own feathers and fibers and, you know, they're part mm-hmm. of Sunstar. And it would right. have been wonderful if they could somehow en- have engineered her that the wings were like part of her body and not the saddle. Mm hmm. Because the other piece of that is that the wings often, the mechanism by which they they come out and they hang outward is kind of fragile. And very often, like, one wing will be droopy and, like, <laughs> have a very hard time staying up. Right. Oh, they are very, very fragile. Tiny little pins. Yes, it's very, very fragile. And, and if you've opened your Sunstar, you may know that that whenever you try to change the wing positions they they will often break and and i mean obviously with age but even when we had them as kids and they were brand new they were still broke so right and clear plastic for toys for whatever reason is known to always be brittle mm-hmm. and prone to breakage isn't it and funny you see how it, that works you see it all the time with these unicorns though in terms of their hooves the horns Mm-hmm. You know, very often they come with, you know, what, battle damage Sunstar? <laughs> <laughs> right, there's often stress cracks and things like that on right. the legs. And you just wonder, is that happening to the rest of the body, but because it's painted, you don't see it? Or is it just the fact that, it, for whatever reason, that paint has created this protective layer? I don't Maybe. I don't know. It's interesting. Sunstar. <laughs> see what's inside. There you go. Well, that is one of the prototypes that we have. We can see all the insides. That's of true. It. You, on the archive, you can see the uh, test shot Sunstar in that lurid orange plastic. Yes. Yes. Where you can see all the fasteners and connectors. And really, the spray does do a really good job of covering up all the kibble inside. Mm hmm. Right. Um, there is one little uh, addition that's on Sunstar. Now, when they are non-jewel armor, they are normal horses. But as soon as they become jewel armor, they suddenly get this little crown around their tail. So <laughs> Sunstar has a pink crown, but it is also something that's seen in the show. So it also has this fun little scroll work around it. But yeah. it is 100% screen accurate. So, yeah, it's another cool little detail. So again, I think that when Greg was designing this, he really made it almost 100% accurate to what she is in the show. I mean, I would say probably, you know, the thing that we've been talking about the most is that all the other jewel armor pieces, when you look at the show, they they don't have a lot of detail. They're not very you know, texturized. They don't have a lot of those small little things that the toys ended up having. But I feel like in the show, the unicorns do have all those details and it translated really pretty, pretty into the actual toy itself. Oh, definitely. It truly does feel like a deluxe piece of, of toy. Right. Right. Um, And we had talked about the rump jewels. The only thing is that in the show, uh, her rump jewels, I think that they, they range in color, I suppose I suppose it also depends on what scene you're looking at. Yeah. So and who was guess, animating it? That day. Right. Yeah. So I, I guess the purple works on this, but I think that she's supposed to have multicolored, like yellows and purples and blues and greens. Yeah, I think so. At least that's what the style guide has. Yeah. So now let's go to her friend Moon Dance and let's talk about her. So Moon Dance here, not quite as ornate in the sense of I I would say additional like designs or additional accessories as Sunstar but I I like Moondance in that again she has a beautiful um, collar and she also has this this what did you call it a Victorian some sort of headpiece or what did you say I mean she definitely has the show horse headpiece 
Yes. It's very, it's almost a little bit military. Okay. Like a parade, mili- like a military parade horse. With like a fleur de lis on it or something. Yeah, it's such an, it's such a strange piece. But I mean, it works in her design. Like, it's got all the colors, the silver, the magenta, and the teal. That and we were talking colors. about if it would be better to have had like a molded piece of like hard plastic hair on the unicorns instead of like this decorative thing. And I think that of Sunstar and Moondance, Moondance's little tufted pieces almost look the most like hair. So Right. And I think I, think I was almost, I like it a little better. Right. I, I think that I liked it a little bit more as well. So I think it's just because of the fact that it kind of looked as if it could have been hair. And as far as screen accuracy goes, Moondance is almost the exact shade of this like lavender bluish purple that that she's supposed to be. Um, mm-hmm. Again, just like Sunstar, she has the translucent legs and the muzzle. Um, but I mean, other than that, all, everything else is pretty much screen accurate. Her her hair color, her um, little rump jewels, the um, the coloring she's of got a little moon on her rump. Right, just like in the show. actually, And it's always, I don't know, it, did you ever think, why doesn't Sunstar have a son? Because I well, did as a kid. Yeah, that's true. But you know, you wonder, if you're born with a moon right there, aren't you just going to get some sort of moon name? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but you know what? She's unique, and maybe it's just because she's a princess, but Shadow Song doesn't have a heart anywhere on him. He doesn't even have rump jewels. I was going to, I just didn't even think about that, but you're right. Yeah, he doesn't. Although Cleo does, but not Shadow Song. Well, he's the anyway, outcast, you know. Right. Back to, back to Moondance here. So in her non jewel armor, she has this pretty saddle. It's a reddish color and it has little fringes on it and some decorations, but that changes with the um, jewel power. Um, she also has a less decorative collar. It's, it's almost like a belt. It's just like a purple strap with a holster for the moonstone. But in the when she has jewel power, it almost looks like an upside down crown. Again, I don't know if that was alluding to the fact that she's a princess or not, but that's the way that I always saw it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, if you flip that over, that is, that's a very classic fantasy crown design, you know? Right, right. And in the show, it's a purple and with a hint of silver, but on on the doll, it's all silver. Um, So that's one thing that it's not quite screen accurate on. The other thing is the the headpiece, kind of that, I don't don't really know what it is. Yeah, okay, the mask. Um, but it it's much more vibrant red. Um, same thing with the saddle, although on the toy, it's more of like this maroonish color. Yeah. Um, the saddle is like a sparkly maroon. Um, I, I don't know why they didn't make it red. Uh, maybe it's just because when in play, if you put Fallon next to her, it would have been like, well, where does the red come from? But I think it, I think it stands out nicely. I mean... Yeah. No, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's definitely like, we could mold these in the same color of plastic. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why. (laughs) Right. So again, a cost savings. Yeah, exactly. And the design on the saddle, it's pretty much the same. Um, There's silver decorations on on the reddish or here we have a purple saddle so that's pretty Mm -hmm. much the same um the flags the purple is a little bit more of a brighter purple um and then it's the teal but for the most part that's all screen accurate yeah i I always loved the flags even though in the show you know the flag sort of wraps around balan's legs while she's riding and it would obscure basically from them having to probably draw like a stirrup Mm-hmm. Right. So, but on the toy, of course, it's more of a flat piece that gives the illusion of depth. But with the way would that you the have, flags curl. But would you have wanted it to kind of been separated so that you could kind of holster Balan's you know, legs? I think inside the way that the toys sit on the unicorns, it probably wouldn't have been possible anyway, unless they were like a foot wide on the unicorn. <laughs> it would have made it a lot wider. So I guess it's right. better to have it as a flat. A thing now for me, I always kind of saw it like more like a 
blanket or something as you would put over a horse and then put the saddle over. Um, I don't think that they were thinking of it that way, but that's the way that I always kind of saw it as. Yeah, I mean, it definitely gives that vibe. And then, like Sunstar, she has this decorative cup that uh, sits on her, uh, well, oh, uh, where her tail starts. So when she's a normal unicorn, she doesn't have that. But when she has jewel power, then this little cup appears. Um, it's a teal-colored cup in the show. Um, it has a little bit more like a leaf design um, than on the toy. Yeah, the toy definitely is a little definitely a little different looking Mm -hmm. it's kind of Um, hard to describe what even it is in the toy the um i was just looking at the mask as well i feel like the mask had larger eye holes than the than the doll does I, i feel like the doll feels more like what would actually be appropriate to have as a mask like to protect yourself versus mm. the versus the show art i feel like the show art it's a little bit less protective right it's like oh you've got five inches around her eyes right right i think that moon dance um maybe not quite as deluxe feeling as Sunstar. She's definitely, she's fun and I like her. She's very pretty, but I think there's just something about the Sunstar toy and the way that it was created. Maybe it was just even the color scheme, but it just feels much more deluxe to me, but that's my own opinion. Is it the wings? I think it's the wings. It's the color. It's the fact that it's gold and it just, it stands out. I think. Because it's gold, it's more deluxe. <laughs> exactly. But in real life, I don't even like gold. I prefer silver, so I don't know. But it's just the way that it looks like on the toy itself. Yeah, I mean, I I always appreciated with Moondance, though, that she has three pieces of kibble to take on and off. Versus the one. Versus Sunstar, it's just one giant cell to move. Yes. Did you ever put the wings on Moondance and pretend oh, like she flew? Of okay. course. Yeah. <laughs> that was one nice thing that you could interchange the two. So if you wanted to, you could put, you know, the, I, I don't know if the mask fits because I know that their, their head is leaning a different way, but I suppose it could. But yeah, I mean, that's, that was something fun about the dolls is that you could really interchange all of them because they were all pretty much the same size and they mm-hmm. wore the same armor pieces. Yeah, so, oh, there's a there's a nice like changeability and playability with the deluxe stuff specifically. You could mm-hmm. change the outfits of the girls or the pieces on the unicorns if you wanted to. Right. You could put jewel armor on the deluxe dolls. Exactly. Yes. So there you go. That is our review of the entire Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders doll line, comparing it with its screen accuracy versions of its final artwork. Thank you for indulging me. You're so welcome. As we have mentioned, this is one of Chris's pet peeves. I I know how you feel about screen accuracy and whether, you know, you wanted, well, that really influenced you as a kid of whether or not you really wanted a toy or not. Of course, because if it wasn't screen accurate, it didn't really bring the thing to life for me then. Mm -hmm. Then it was just sort of like a thing that was similar to the thing that I liked. (laughs) Well, you know, it's so funny. A property that is something that we are also celebrating here at the Archive Tinko and the Guardians of the Magic. Right. I feel like the dolls themselves, and this is going to have to be another conversation for a different time, but the dolls themselves, it doesn't really, for me, feel like the show. And since we were just talking about the unicorns, Pearl Rider especially, with the butterfly wings and the design of like the circus horse, it, it just, it's like, was that in the show? Because I didn't get Welcome. that. It's like... The people who designed Tenko were like, hmm, it's about a stage magician. Okay, Las Vegas. You know, and and those, like, headdresses that all of of them came with, it was very Vegas-like. I guess I've just never really thought about that. But I'm really, I'm, I'm very grateful to Greg for the way that he created the dolls and that they actually do look like their screen counterparts. And that, you know, as children, we recognized that, hey, this is which character this is, and this is this particular, you know, line or whatever it might be. It was very recognizable. Right. It was 
it gave that little extra oomph to the toys as children, especially to me, at least, that they looked like the show overall. Right. And they were close and they were close enough to, you know, be like, OK, it's good enough. Screen accuracy. <laughs> it met with Chris's approval. <laughs> You're right. Like it wasn't like the Tenko dolls, which were always disappointing to me. Mm hmm. I mean, Despite they were fun if you wanted, like, a pretty. little Barbie. Yeah, yeah no, I mean... I was going to say, if you wanted a little fashion doll, they were good. Yeah, I mean, they're a gorgeous little doll. Like, you know, those... And those dolls went on to be used as bases for the Disney musical princesses. Wasn't it the other way around? Oh, I thought Tinko came first. Mm, no, the the because the musical princesses were used as uh, molds for jewel That's writers. Right. Musical princesses were used as molds for jewel writers and then reused later for because Tinko. It was, wasn't it Wonder Woman? And yeah, those were the, the Wonder Woman bodies, yeah. Yes. Oh, but those are going to have to be a toy com- history straight. <laughs> those are going to have to be conversations for another day, though. But at least we finished the conversations about jewel writers. So that was the screen accuracy. Yay. I know this is something that we haven't really talked about on the podcast for whatever reason. We really haven't talked much about the toys. So yeah, I mean, like we've talked sort of around the toys with Greg and the development of them and all of that, but we've never really like sat down and actually talked about the toys themselves. Right. So this was really fun. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for, <laughs> I, as I said, you know, it's, it's more or less Chris's pet peeve, but thanks for indulging my thoughts as well, because I know sometimes I, my thoughts aren't always the same as the rest of the fandoms, but I would love to know what you thought about it. I mean, obviously leave a comment and tell us how you felt about whether it was a particular specific doll or the jewel writers in general, or what your, what your memories are and what your thoughts are, especially regarding screen accuracy. Exactly. So if you want to listen to more episodes of this podcast, you can find us on most major podcast platforms. We're on Amazon podcasts, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and of course, our home on Podbean. And if you want to find out more from the Jewel Writers Archive, you can visit us at www.jewelwritersarchive.com. Or you can follow us on pretty much any major social media at Jewel Writers Archive or on Twitter at Jewel Writers. And as we always like to say at the end of every episode, friends together. Friends forever. Bye, everyone. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us. All right. Jewel power. (laughs) 